And we welcome you to beautiful Langhorst Field on the campus of Elmhurst College in Elmhurst as we get set for Blue Jay Lacrosse. Glad to have you with us and logged on to BlueJayTV.com. My name is Mark Kruger. Delighted to bring you all the action here from Langhorst Field. The Blue Jays come into this match with a overall record of 5-5. Five and five. They are 0-1 in the CCIW. They dropped their conference opener back on April 7th up in Kenosha against Carroll, 20-10. Meanwhile, the Titans of Illinois Wesleyan with an overall mark of 7-4. The Titans are 1-0 in the CCIW. They opened up conference play with an 18-3 win over Augustana on April 7th. Your three officials for this game, Margaret Carlson, Stephen McGovern, and Pat Nolan. Blue Jays in their home white jerseys. Meanwhile, the Titans in the traveling green with the white numbers. In goal for the Titans is Claire Quist. She is 1-1. One and one. She has logged 231 minutes, 32 goals against. Her goals against average, 8.28. Janae Godfrey is 6 and 3. She has logged 437 minutes in goal, but uh, in this game it will be Claire Quist getting the start in goal. Meanwhile, for the Blue Jays, Megan Keener, 57 sophomore, double zero, she gets the start in goal. She is 5 and 5. She has logged 471 minutes in goal. 93 goals against her. Her goals against average 11.83. Blue Jays are averaging 11.6 goals per game. The Titans, 13.45 goals per contest. Mentioned Megan Keener in goal. Teresa Marcello, Daniela Valerio, Yazira Cisneros, Emma Cappuccini, Tessa Celentine, Larissa Arvanitas, Taylor DeVitt, Isabel Walker, Grace Knable, Ellen Brown, Giselle Beltran. The starting lineup for the Blue Jays for Allison Brady. The head coach in her fourth year as the head coach. She is assisted by Anna Schaefer and Jim Moy. For the Titans, Maggie Torres, Abby Kashina, Claire Quist. We talked about her in goal. She is the captain. Danny Engelbright, Sam Bidlack, Jess Schell, Riley Rooney, Amanda Best, Mariah Smith, Claudia Richmond, Sydney Allen, and Grania Kelly. The starting lineup for Lindsay Keller, the head coach of the Titans. She also is in her fourth year. As the head coach, Lindsay Keller's assistants, Alex Olson, Claire Rosenberg, Allison Brady's assistants, Anna Schaefer, and Jim Moy. All right. Well, all we need, well, okay, the official center, Margaret Carlson, she is holding the ball, and we are just about ready to get things underway. Finally, we've got some spring weather, 65 degrees, cloudy. Hardly any wind to speak of, so just ideal conditions for lacrosse here at Langhorst Field. Draw controlled by Illinois Wesleyan, and we are off and running. Ball is loose and on the floor, on, on the turf, I should say, in the crease right in front of Keener. Still on the ground. Now it is controlled by Illinois Wesleyan. Kelly, number 44, dishes it inside. Now they work it behind the cage. Sam Bidlack will veer off to the far side, and now they're working around to the front. There is a 90-second shot clock on the women's side. Kelly makes the move, gets in the crease, and she still has the ball, gets forced out, pushes it behind the cage. Kelly, boy, big girl. She is 5'9", junior, and a turnover. Here come the Blue Jays on the attack now. And we're going to have a whistle here. And on the restart, it'll be the Blue Jays. Trying to clear it and not controlling that ground ball was Ellen Brown. It's going to go out of bounds. And so the Blue Jays do not clear. And the Titans now on the attack. Rooney on the ground. Ball picked up by Abby Kashina. And we're going to have a whistle now. Stops the clock here. Two 30-minute halves, by the way, on the women's side. And this will be a free shot here for Illinois Wesleyan. Great opportunity for Wesleyan to 
score first. Oh, there's a save by Keener as the shot on goal there by Claudia Richmond. Wesleyan still on the attack. Another shot. That one goes high. That one by Bariah Smith. It'll still be Wesleyan ball here. As I mentioned here on the women's side, two 30-minute halves on the men's side. And there is another shot that time by Richmond. The men play four 15-minute quarters. And by the way, this is a... And there's a shot, a sidearm shot, and the goal there by 15, Riley Rooney. So Riley Rooney puts the Titans on the board first. 28-09 left to play here in the first half, and it's one to nothing, Illinois Wesleyan. Illinois Wesleyan, again, the 18-3 win over Augustana on April 7th. They are one of the top teams in the CCIW, so it's a big test here for the Blue Jays. Now, we mentioned Elmhurst coming off of that 20-10 loss to Carroll. Carroll scored the first six goals of the game and went on to win 20-10. So the Blue Jays are hoping to come out of the gate here a little better tonight. Wesleyan scores the first goal. One to nothing in favor of the Titans. Victor E., the Blue Jay mascot, has made an appearance here. So let's hope he can bring the Blue Jays some luck here. Another ground control win for the Titans. Titans work it up top. Amanda Best, number 19. Now they pass it over here to Sam Bidlack. And they work behind the cage. Good movement away from the ball for the Titans. That pass deflected. Ball on the ground. And it's going to be scooped up by Isabel Walker. Walker clears it here for the Blue Jays. Passes it off to Knable. Knable and Walker, they are your two offensive threats, mostly for the Blue Jays. They each have 49 points. Walker with 31 goals. Knable with 44 goals. So look for those two to be on the offensive attack most of the time for the Blue Jays. Here is Knable, number 22 at the point. Passes it off to Ellen Brown. Brown guarded tightly by Amanda Best. The shot and the goal. So the Blue Jays on their first offensive possession with the goal, and they tie it up here with 26-37 left to play. Ellen Brown getting the goal for the Blue Jays. For Brown, that is her 10th goal of the season. Point number 11 for Ellen. She has one assist. So a big goal by Ellen Brown to tie things up. Just underway here from Langhorst Field. By the way, the first of two, a doubleheader here on BlueJayTV.com. The men will be playing here at Langhorst Field tonight at 7.30. The Blue Jays will be taking on CCIW foe, the Spartans of Dubuque. Dubuque 6-6, six six, the Blue Jays 9-1. Jason Duro will have the call tonight at 7.30, so stay logged on for Blue Jay Lacrosse, a double dose of Blue Jay Lacrosse here from Langhorse Field tonight. Turnover here, and they stop the clock here with 26-21 left to play here in this first half. It'll be Blue Jay, Blue Jay ball here as we get things restarted. Arvanides loses the ball down on the ground, trying to pick it back up is Cisneros. And Brown comes away with it for the Blue Jays. Ellen Brown, she does a great job with ground balls. She is the team leader in that category with 44. However, they turn it over here. Rooney working behind the cage. Rooney has the lone goal for the Titans. 
Ellen Brown has scored for the Blue Jays. We're tied at one. Here's Richmond trying to pass it inside and the crease ball on the ground. And we got a whistle here up top. The whistle by Margaret Carlson. Margaret Carlson pointing her finger. And whose ball is it? Oh my, it's going to be the Titans here. It's going to be Brown. Or Kelly, I should say. Sprints in, shoots, and scores. So Grania Kelly gets the score. For Kelly, that is her 27th goal of the season. The leading scorer for the Titans is Danny Engelbright. She has 30. And now the official looking at one of the cues for the Titans. And it looks like it's okay because he gives it right back to Kelly. So Kelly's goal with 25 minutes and 31 seconds left to play in the first half. And the Titans recapture the lead 2-1. to one. Grace Knabel, the draw control for the Blue Jays. Grania Kelly for Wesleyan. And again, the draw controlled by Illinois Wesleyan. That's something that has hurt Elmhurst this season. The ground control percentages. Kelly got it in shot. No good. Back of the cage as they work it out in front. Going down to the ground. Falling is Claudia Richmond. The save by, by Keener. Now we got another whistle and a foul. Well, this foul is going to go against the Blue Jays, so another great opportunity for Wesleyan. And the shot, oh, off the left post, the shot on goal by Abby Kashina. And they reset the 90-second shot clock. Wesleyan with a 2-1 to -one lead. Kashina got cut off, now loses it on the ground. Ball kicked and picked up by Wesleyan. Kelly. Nowhere to go. Now she passes to a streaking Richmond. Richmond loses it. Ball on the ground. Still on the ground. Kicked out, and it's picked up by Illinois Wesleyan's Danny Engelbright. I mentioned the draw controls. Elmhurst, on the year, winning just 40% of the draw controls. Meanwhile, Illinois Wesleyan controlling 64%. Kelly with a nice... Streak into the crease, and it's going to go into the into Keener's stick. So she'll get the save as we are six minutes into the first half. Blue Jays with the ball trailing by one, trying to get it out of their own end here. Pretty good pressure there by Rooney. Ball on the ground now, and the Blue Jays recapture it. Cisneros gets it back. Cisneros passes it off to Ellen Brown, and... She can't handle it. It goes out of bounds, and the Blue Jays turn it over here. Mariah Smith with the restart to Kelly. Kelly with a nice pass into the crease. Knocked away. Ball picked up off the ground by Kelly. Passes it off. Ball on the ground. Boy, again, Illinois Wesleyan getting all the ground balls, it seems like, here early on. Good movement away from the ball by Richmond. And now Wesleyan working it around the perimeter. Now behind the cage. 56 on the shot clock. And now we got a whistle here. And Illinois Wesleyan can turn it over. Blue Jay ball. CCIW battle here between Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan. Again, the first of two. The Blue Jay men's team will take to Langhorst Field tonight at 7.30 against the Spartans of Dubuque. So log on tonight at 7.30. Jason Duro will have the call for you as it'll be the Blue Jays and the Spartans of Dubuque coming up later on tonight. Here's Grania Kelly 
And Kelly has the ball knocked out, and it's scooped up again by Richmond. Another ground ball by Illinois Wesley. Streaking shot by Abby Kashina, and that goes wide. But the Blue Jays really had one offensive possession, and fortunately they scored. It was Ellen Brown getting the goal for Elmers, but Illinois Wesleyan is controlling the clock here. There's the shot by Danny Engelbright and the goal. Danny Engelbright is her, th that's her 31st goal of the season, her 43rd point. She is the leading scorer, as I mentioned, for the Titans. A 5'4 junior from Elk Grove Village. She went to Conant High School. Give the assist to Sam Bidlack. That comes at the 21-49 mark of the first half. So it is now 3-1 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. Kelly and Knable, the draw control at midfield. Ball goes up into the air, and it's controlled by Brown. So the Blue Jays get that. Ground control. This one knocked out of bounds, and it's off of Brown, so it'll go back over to Illinois Wesleyan. And again, the Blue Jays do not get into their offensive set. Dropping the ball, picking it up now. Abby Kashina for Illinois Wesleyan. Boy, they really spread the offense here on this possession here. Kelly with a nice pass inside to Danny Engelbright and another score. Grania Kelly getting the assist for Engelbright. It is her second goal in just about 30 seconds. She's got two goals in 30 seconds. Timeout taken here by Elmhurst here as back-to-back -back goals by Danny Engelbright, her 31st and 32nd goals of the season. And Illinois Wesleyan leads it now by a score of 4-1. to one. Timeout taken by the Blue Jays. Three unanswered here by Illinois Wesleyan. As I mentioned, Illinois Wesleyan 7-4 and four overall, 1-0 one oh in the conference as a, a 4 Team lead in the conference, Carroll, North Central, Carthage, and Illinois Wesleyan all won their conference openers. Carroll, of course, knocked off Elmers. Carroll, by the way, is 10-0 overall. Carroll having a great year. Blue Jays, before losing to Carroll back on April 4th, they knocked off Concordia University of Chicago, 13-8. Isabel Walker, Ellen Brown, and Grace Knable combined to score 11 goals in that ball game. But a tough non-conference schedule by Allison Brady and playing teams like Monmouth, Loris, Olivet, Beloit, St. Mary's, Trine, Hanover. Those games preparing them for this tough CCIW conference schedule. They're going to have to come back from a 4-1 to one deficit here tonight. Mentioned the head coach of the Blue Jays is Allison Brady. She was named the head coach during the summer of 2013 after she spent two seasons as the head coach at Robert Morris University where she did a great job there. Holds a bachelor degree in education from Eastern Illinois University. And she looks to turn this Blue Jay lacrosse program around. They are heading in the right direction. There's no question about it. As is the head coach for the men's team, Mark Morell. And again, the Blue Jays men's team coming up later tonight, 7.30. Men's team 9-1 going up against the Spartans of Dubuque at 6-6. Six six. That CCIW battle will get underway 
opening face-off at 7.30 tonight. Well, once again, Illinois Wesleyan with the ground control. So they've got the ball once again. It's been in their end of the field most of this first half. And a streaking Riley Rooney, and she scores for Riley Rooney. That is her second goal of the game. She scored the first goal just about two minutes into the game, and now Rooney scores her second goal, and it is now 5-1, to one, Titans. The assist goes to Sam Bidlack. Riley Rooney, a 5-1 freshman out of St. Charles. She was a saint, St. Charles East High School. For Rooney, her two goals, goals number 22 and number 23 on the year so far. Illinois Wesleyan, by the way, with six different players that have scored at least 11 goals this season. So it is a well-balanced attack here for the, the Titans. I mentioned they're averaging 13.5 goals per game. And the Blue Jays again having trouble setting up on the offensive end. They lose it. Engelbright coming away with it. Number eight streaking along the near side here. Getting double teamed. And a push from behind. Engelbright on the restart. Engelbright passes it off to Mariah Smith. Loses it, picks it right back up. Illinois Wesleyan looking very impressive here. They space the, the field very well. And shooting and scoring, Abby Kashina getting another goal for Illinois Wesleyan. For Kashina, that is her first goal tonight. And it is her 22nd goal of the season. Comes at the 20-01 mark here of this first half. So the score is now 6-1. to one, Five unanswered for the Titans. One thing that has impressed me, Illinois Wesleyan, is his constant movement away from the ball, streaking in the crease, and they're getting some some opportunities here to score and they're taking advantage of it. Couple of a goal, a girls with two goals for Illinois Wesleyan. Rooney has two goals. Engelbright has two goals. Remember for Engelbright they came up 31 seconds apart. Draw control. The ball goes out of bounds. It will go to the Blue Jays. So let's see if the Blue Jays can get into their offensive set here and Get a good shot on goal here. Ellen Brown with the ball, number 24 for the Blue Jays. She's going to pass it off to Walker. And Isabel is going to jog and work behind the cage. Well, now she comes back out. Flips the ball in front of the goal, but is mishandled by Teresa Marcello. And it'll be Blue Jay ball here on the restart. Great opportunity for Marcello here to score. Working against Claire Quist. Shoot, ooh, a little bit high. But the Blue Jays will retain the ball here. 19-20 remaining here in this first half. Ball on the ground in the front of the cage, and it's scooped up by Jess Shell of the Titans. Blue Jays had a nice opportunity there. Now it's Rooney in the open field. She passes it up front to Richmond. Bidlack makes the move. Now goes behind the cage. Best. Far side, Kashina. Blue Jays packing it in defensively here. Good patience by the Titans. There's a nice flash by Mariah Smith, but she couldn't handle it. Ball on the ground. It's picked up, however, by Richmond of Illinois Wesley. Coming here to the near side, Bidlack. 
pass is the shot, I should say, by Engelbright. She kind of lost control of a little bit of it, went over the cage. It'll be Illinois Wesleyan ball here. 34 seconds on the shot clock. Well, there was a foul, apparently, so it'll be Wesleyan on the restart. It'll be Engelbright looking for her third goal of the game. Engelbright rushes the cage, saved by Keener. Wesleyan still in possession, however. Boy, again, there's that movement I talked about. Away from the ball, Riley Rooney gets it and in one motion puts it in the back of the net. Third goal of the game for Riley Rooney. Again, only a freshman out of St. Charles East. This one coming with exactly 18 minutes left to play here in this first half. And for Rooney, her third goal of the game. Six unanswered goals now for Illinois Wesleyan. Remember, we were tied at one back at the 26-37 mark when Ellen Brown scored the lone goal for the Blue Jays. Since then, the Titans have rattled off six straight. should mention, if there is a 10-plus advantage in the score, uh, then there will be a running clock here on the women's side. Knable loses the draw control to Sam Bidlack. Bidlack snagged the ball out of the air. and Going back to work, here is Kelly, number 44. Get away from the ball. Titans are constantly running through that crease in front of the cage. There goes Kelly. She gets it. There it is. That's a perfect example of her moving away from the ball. Couldn't get into the goal, though. Nice save by Keener, but the Titans retain possession. Another streak. This time, it's Best, Amanda Best, and she can't control it. So it's going to go to the Blue Jays here. And there's a whistle and a foul as the ball comes loose. Picking it up off the ground, Emma Cappuccini. Here's Ellen Brown. Brown doing a nice job of cradling the ball. Gets to the far side. Now works her way into the middle. Passes it off to Walker. Walker looking to penetrate. Goes to the middle. Shoots. And it's wide to the left. Boy, it looked like Margaret Carlson. She had the flag out. She was just about ready to throw it. Then she put it back into her pocket. Titans ball here, 16-20, remaining in this first half. It is 7-1. Illinois Wesleyan looking to go 2-0 in the CCIW. And there's Kelly getting the pass from Bidlack, and Kelly with the score. Grania Kelly scoring her second goal of the night. And it is now 8-1, favor of Illinois Wesleyan. Kelly getting that ball, boy, about two meters right in front of the cage. And just a quick catch and release. And the score now is 8-1 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. Sam Bidlack will get the assist. After this game for uh, the Blue Jays, they'll be on the road on Saturday. They'll travel to Dubuque. 12 o'clock will be the start of that game. And then they play uh, Sunday as well at Cornell. That match will start at 1 o'clock. Then a week from tonight, April 18th, they'll be in Naperville. They'll take on North Central, 6 o'clock start. And the final game of the season, Wednesday, April 25th, right here at Langhorst Field against Carthage. That is a 7 o'clock start. So, tough, tough schedule 
to end the season for the Blue Jays. Again, it's Kelly with the ball for Illinois Wesley. Boy, most of this action has been on the left part of your screen. Kashina holding now, passes it off. Ball in front, and Keener couldn't quite hold on to it. It goes into the back of the cage, and it's scooped up by Mariah Smith of Illinois Wesleyan. Ball on the ground now, and it's picked up by the Titans. 50 seconds on the shot clock. Kashina now passes it off. Kelly passes to Best. Good defense and the save by Megan Keener, the 5'7 sophomore goalkeeper out of Stowe, Ohio. Megan is from. Blue Jays lose the ball. Ground picked up by Heather Grimmer. And now we've got a, a, a penalty. And it's going to be, I believe... <laughs> Margaret Carlson looking for that yellow card. Now she finally got it. A push. So Abby Kashina will take a seat. The infraction against her. So it will be a man-up situation here now for the Blue Jays. See if they can t take advantage of it here. 14-41 remaining here in this first half. Restart it here. And restarting it for the Blue Jays, it'll be Ellen Brown. Brown now working her way into the middle of the field. No one really on her, so now she gets closer and closer. Passes it off to Knable. Here's Walker. Walker tried to penetrate, knocked out, uh, got kicked back out. Now she's at the top. Boy, the Blue Jays cannot get anything going. Give some credit to this Titans defense. Walker now jogging behind the cage, flips it over to Brown. Brown with a spin move, got cut off. Nice defense by Maggie Torres. And we've got a whistle and ooh, a slap to the face is the call by Margaret Carlson and now coming out of the game Maggie Torres so a two man up situation for the Blue Jays Torres is going to join Kashina in the penalty area number two and number three out of the game momentarily for Illinois Wesleyan just logged on to BlueJTV.com Blue Jay women's lacrosse Illinois Wesleyan the opponent Titans lead it 8-1 with 13.58 left to play here in the first half. Two-man-up situation for the Blue Jays here. Knable at the point passes. And the shot by Walker. And the save by Quist. Walker behind the cage now. and The officials say give the ball to Daniela Valerio. So Valerio has it now behind the cage, and we'll restart. And we're back in business. Knabel goes to the ground, saved by Quist. Brown gets the ball out of the air for the Blue Jays. Brown curling into the middle, and she'll bring it back out. Passes to Knabel. And a whistle. Boy, they're, they're calling it pretty close here tonight. Grace Knable. Bit of a push by Shell. And so it'll be Knable here with an opportunity here to get on the board. Grace with a spin move. Shoots. And the save by Quist. Claire Quist with a nice save. Illinois Wesleyan now on the attack. 12.42 remaining here in the half. Working behind the cage is Grimmer. Passes it to Richmond. 
Kelly at the point. Kelly with a pass inside and the shot no good by Best. All right, check that. That was Grimmer, number 12. Kashina holding up top now for Wesley. Got a new shot clock. Richmond passes. Curling and shooting is Riley Rooney for the score. Boy, Riley Rooney with goal number four for Illinois Wesleyan. Comes with 12 minutes and three seconds remaining here in the first half. And it is now nine to one. Four goals for midfielder Riley Rooney, a 5-1 freshman. Goal was unassisted by Riley. And so now, eight straight goals for Illinois Wesleyan. And they lead it now. The Titans do 9-1. to one. Eight unanswered. And the ground control taken by Mariah Smith of Illinois Wesleyan. Work it ahead. Here's Grimmer. Lost it. Picked it right back up. And she'll work it behind the cage now. Rooney. She has been the story here in this first half. Four goals for the Titans. Smith with the ball. Smith passes it to a streaking Claudia Richmond. And Richmond gets the goal. Boy, again, constant movement away from the ball. Richmond flashing into the crease. Gets the ball and shoots for Claudia Richmond. That is her 16th goal of the season. Comes at the 11:37 mark of the first half. Nine unanswered goals now for the Titans, and it's 10 to 1. And a timeout taken here by Allison Brady. Boy, not much you can say other than other than be aware of the streaking Titans in the crease, right in front of the goal, of the goal, about three or four meters, they keep streaking there, and they, they're they getting open, and they're getting the ball and getting some easy opportunities to score on poor Megan Keener. See if the Blue Jays can defend that a little bit better here. 11.37 remaining. Illinois Wesleyan, by the way, they will be at home this Saturday against Carthage. That'll be a great game. Illinois Wesleyan and Carthage. And then they'll be, the Illinois Wesleyan will be at Concordia on Thursday, April 19th. That's a 4 o'clock start. They'll be at home against Carroll on Saturday, April 21st, 1 o'clock. And then they'll be at home April 25th against North Central. That's a 7 o'clock start. Final game of the regular season for Illinois Wesleyan. April 28th, they'll be at Dubuque. That's a 1 o'clock start. This game here, the first of two here tonight from Langhorst Field. The men of Elmhurst and head coach Mark Morell will be taking on the Spartans of Dubuque. Jason Durrell will have the call. That is a 7.30 Face off tonight, so stay logged on to bluejtv.com. This game is the first of two here tonight. I'm sure the lights will be on momentarily here at Langhorst Field. It'll be Kelly and Ellen Brown on this draw control. Eleven thirty-seven remaining here in this first half. And the ground, boy, controlled by Illinois Wesleyan goes right into the stick of Danny Engelbright. Boy, boy, that's, that's the way things have gone tonight. It's been all Illinois Wesley. Kelly in the back of the cage. There's a streaking player and another score. Didn't get it. There's number two, it's number two, Maggie Torres. Getting the goal. That's her first goal of the night. Give the assist to Kelly. And it is now 11-1. to 1. 
And once again, it's a streaking Titan right in front of the goal. Torres with the catch and shoot, and it is now 11 to 1. And as I, I mentioned a couple of moments ago, a 10 plus lead by one team will result in a running clock. So that's what we've got now here a running clock. 10.43 left to play here in this first half. It's 11 to 1 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. 10 unanswered goals. Ellen Brown scoring the only goal for the Blue Jays here in this first half. And she's trying to win the draw control. And Ellen trying to pick up the ground ball. And she does. Well, now she it falls down on the ground and it's picked up by Kashina of Illinois Wesleyan. Kashina will run behind the cage. Kashina looking for someone out in front of the cage. No one there. So they work it up top to Torres. Kelly dropped it behind the cage, picked it up. Kelly with a pass, and it goes down onto the ground, scooped up by, by Walker. But she lost it to Illinois Wesleyan. There's a streaking Heather Grimmer and another goal. Heather Grimmer, her first goal of the game and of the season. 9.22 left to make it 12-1. Grimmer is a 5'5 senior out of Downers Grove, Illinois, a former Trojan, Downers Grove North. She is into the scoring column, and her first goal of the season, along with three assists, four ground balls on the year for Heather. And so now it'll be Brown... And who is out there for Illinois Wesleyan? That's Engelbright. She'll take the draw control here. 12-1 to 1 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. The Blue Jays coming into this match with a record of 5-5 five and five overall. Illinois Wesleyan 7-4. and four. Ground control picked up by Engelbright. Wesleyan with an 11-goal lead looking for more. Boy, Lindsay Keller, she has herself a pretty darn good team here. Illinois Wesleyan has been in control throughout this first half. Very impressed with the offense. And on the Kashina making the move, trying to get close. We got a whistle here. This will be against the Blue Jays. So it'll be Kashina here on the restart. Opportunity here against Keener. She steps up, shoots. Saved by Keener. Back of the cage for Illinois Wesleyan. 7.36 left here in the first half. Ground ball scooped up by Richmond. This is Grimmer. Grimmer trying to get it inside, and the ball goes down on the ground as Mariah Smith couldn't get control of it. The Blue Jays now come out of the pack. Knable gets it into the middle here. Taylor Davitt, and she has it stripped and got a whistle. It'll be a foul against Wesleyan, so it'll be Blue Jays on the restart. To the far side, Ellen Brown. Blue Jays just have not had many opportunities to score. Walker, number 21, has the ball. Walker makes the move. Trying to break free for a shot. She couldn't, though. She got triple team. Ball on the ground. She gets the ground ball. And Walker passes it off. Ball loose. And it's picked up. Well, it... Thought the Titans had it, but it's loose, and now it's picked up by the Blue Jays. 
Shot clock continuing to wind down now. It's at 26. Again, a 90-second shot clock in play. Brown couldn't get off his shot. Up top, Walker. Shot clock down to 17. And a steal by Illinois Wesleyan. And they're looking to run. And over the head of Bidlack. And it's going to be scooped up by Davitt of the Blue Jays. And it's down on the ground, picked up by Illinois Wesleyan's Grimmer. Grimmer passes it off to Bidlack. Bidlack working here now to the near side. Bidlack passes it off to Rooney. Rooney already with four goals on the night. She loses it, however. The Blue Jays come up with it. Cappuccini sprinting in the middle of the field. Number 16 for Elmhurst. Passes it back to Knable. It's been a tough first half, and now a push by the Titans. It'll be Blue Jays' ball here. Under five minutes remaining here in this first half. Again, a running clock with Illinois Wesleyan leading 12-1. to one. Knable now with the ball. She goes behind the cage. Now cuts back here to the near side. Now moves forward, trying to get an angle, and she loses it. It was Engelbright who came in and knocked it loose. But it'll be an infraction, and the Blue Jays will have it on the restart here. Knable. Free position here for the Blue Jays. Let's see if Knable, it's a tough angle. Working against the goalkeeper, Claire Quist. She sprints up, gets the better angle. Kind of a backhanded shot. Ball is loose on the ground, and Quist picks it up. Another great opportunity by the Blue Jays as they fall short on their quest for their second goal of the game. Bidlack sprinting here to the near side. She looks to go behind the cage. Instead passes it off to Kashina. And Kashina to the top. Grimmer passes. The ball is loose and it's scooped up by Illinois Wesleyan. Three and a half minutes left and it's scooped up now by Megan Keener, the goalkeeper for the Blue Jays. Keener looking for an outlet. And now she tosses it to Cisneros, as she comes up, Cisneros loses it, and it goes into the goal. Give the goal to Claudia Richmond of Illinois Wesleyan. For Richmond, it is her second goal of the evening. She had her first goal at the 11.37 mark, and for Richmond, that is goal number 17 on the season. Makes the score 13 to 1 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. Well, there's not much Allison Brady is going to say at halftime. You have to go out and, and try to execute and, and get some shots on goal. Work for the future. Again, the next three games for the Blue Jays all on the road. This Saturday at the University of Dubuque, this Sunday at Cornell, and a week from tonight at North Central in Naperville. So a tough road ahead for the Blue Jays after this home game here tonight. Two minutes remaining here in this first half. And there is a whistle. And What's the call here? It looks like it's going to be against the Blue Jays. Free shot for Illinois Wesleyan. And coming up and shooting that one into the ground was Richmond. But Illinois Wesleyan retains possession. Catching the ball and moving to her right was Mariah Smith to try to get a better angle and a better shot, but she missed. You've just logged on. It has not been the Blue Jays' night tonight. Illinois Wesleyan leading 13 to 1. And a whistle. And as Riley Rooney caught the ball, 
Official is going to, and we got a yellow card here. Jogging off is Emma Cappuccini. Number 16 for Elmhurst. Elmer, uh, Emma is a 5'6 junior from Mount Prospect. Went to St. Viator High School. And so now, free position shot here for Illinois Wesleyan. This will be Riley Rooney looking for goal number five. Ooh, and on the shot, the ball slipped out of her, out of the pocket of her stick. And so it'll turn the ball over here to the Blue Jays. Under a minute to go here in this first half. Ellen Brown scoring her 10th goal of the season. All the scoring in the first half for Elmhurst. Ball down on the ground. Sydney Allen with the ground ball for Illinois Wesleyan. Allen retreating, and she'll pass it back. Coming up is the goalkeeper, Claire Quist, with the ball as she passes it forward to Kelly. Kelly up to Richmond. Richmond passes it to Bidlack. And Bidlack will jog behind the cage to Rooney. Rooney with the pass and the goal by Mariah Smith. Mariah Smith, her first goal of the game. Give the assist to Riley Rooney. And it is now 14-1. to Final seconds of the first half winding down. And so Mariah Smith, who was named the CCIW Defensive Player of the Week recently for her fine play defensively, she gets the goal to end the first half. And Illinois Wesleyan leads it by a score of 14-1. to Take a 10-minute break and come back for the second half. Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan, you are logged on to BlueJTV.com.
And we welcome you back here to Langhorse Field as we get set for second half action of women's lacrosse, Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan. Illinois Wesleyan leading by a score of 14 to 1. The game was tied at 1, but then 13 unanswered goals by Illinois Wesleyan. Ellen Brown is the lone scorer for the Blue Jays in the first half. Riley Rooney, a freshman, had four goals for Illinois Wesleyan. Grania Kelly had two goals. Claudia Richmond had two goals. Danny Engelbright had two goals. About 30 seconds apart were her two goals. And then one goal apiece, Maggie Torres, Abby Kashina, Mariah Smith, and Heather Grimmer. For Grimmer, her first goal of the game and her first goal of the season. Megan Keener in goal to start the second half for Elmhurst. New goalkeeper for Illinois Wesleyan is Janae Godfrey. She is in goal here to start the second half for Illinois Wesleyan. Godfrey is a 5'4 freshman from Hillsboro, Oregon. So she will get the start. She's logged 437 minutes in goal this season for the Titans. And so she will be in here for the final 30 minutes of this one. Her goals against average, 9.20. She has allowed 67 goals on the season. Six and three on the year is Godfrey. And by the way, because Illinois Wesleyan leading by 10 or more goals, it is a running clock here in the second half. Whistle here, and it looks like it's going to be Free opportunity here for Illinois Wesleyan, I believe. Uh, they're going to have it behind the cage and off to the side on the restart. Just underway here in the second half. Mark Kruger delighted to bring you all the action. It's the first of two. Doubleheader here from Langhorst Field, the Lacrosse men's team of Elmhurst will be on the field here at 7.30, taking on the uh, Spartans of Dubuque. Opening faceoff will be at 7.30. Jason Duro will bring you all the action here tonight for the men's game. So stay logged on to BlueJTV.com. By the way, special thanks to Ashley Liljeberg. She is running the show behind the scenes for both games tonight, running the camera, running the board. Also, special thanks to Kevin Jude, the Sports Information Director here at Elmhurst College, for providing all the numbers and the stats that we needed for tonight's game. CCIW battle here, Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan, and the Titans proving why they are one of the top teams in the conference. Kelly going to work, breaks free, shoots, and it's off to the left. Sort of pulled that one, if you will. Looking for her third goal of the game. Shot, and Rooney on the run shoots and scores. So for Riley Rooney, that is goal number five tonight. And again, only a freshman is Riley Rooney. So she came into the game... With 21 goals, so after her fifth goal there, she now has 26 goals on the year, and she's one of the leaders now for the Titans in that category. By the way, I do want to congratulate Grace Knabel. She was recently named the CCIW Offensive Player of the Week for the second time this season. She had eight goals in Elmhurst's 16-7 win over Monmouth. And then she also had five goals and nine draw controls in Elmhurst's 14-9 loss to Loris. So congratulations to Grace Knabel, second time this season being named the CCIW Offensive Player of the Week. And for Illinois Wesleyan, Mariah Smith, who is number 22 for Illinois Wesleyan. She was the uh, named the Defensive Player of the Week, the senior midfielder from Frankfurt. Wesleyan defense held Augustana to just 10 shots 
She had three goals as well. Or she she held the defense <laughs> held Augustana to just three goals and that eighteen to three win over the Vikings. Smith had four draw controls, two ground balls, and one caused turnover. So congratulations to Illinois Wesleyan's Mariah Smith, CCIW player, defensive player of the week, and on the free position, another goal here for Illinois Wesleyan to make it sixteen to one. So the Blue Jays here. The uh, the goal, by the way, was by number 19, Amanda Best. For Amanda, that is her first goal of the game and her sixth goal of the season. And that makes it 16-1 to in favor of Wesleyan. So the Blue Jays are just going to have to regroup. And they are going to have three road games. Coming up, first one will be on Saturday at the University of Dubuque, another CCIW matchup. That game will get underway at noon. Ball down onto the ground, and it's going to be scooped up here by Cisneros. She works it ahead to Walker. Walker to Brown. Ellen Brown, the lone goal for the Blue Jays here tonight, and it came very early on with 26-37 left to play in the first half is when Brown scored the lone goal for the Blue Jays. Again, a running clock here in the second half. That happens when a team is up by 10 or more goals, and that is the case here tonight. Curl move by Knabel. She's trying to break free. Great defense by Wesleyan. Gets off the shot, and it's no good. Back of the cage, and it's picked up by the Titans. Wesleyan quickly now on the attack. Here's Grimmer. Lost it on the ground. Picked up by Wesleyan. It'll be interesting to see how head coach Lindsey Keller and Illinois Wesleyan plays the rest of this game. There is a running clock, but you certainly don't like to run up the score in any sport. And so now it look, yeah, it looks like Illinois Wesleyan is just going to kind of work the ball around the perimeter and just try to run some of the shot clock down, shot clock down to down to fifty. And a loose ball behind the cage, and it's picked up by Megan Keener. So Blue Jays ball here. Keener flips it over to Walker. Walker now passes it to Cisneros. Cisneros gets across midfield. Well, she passed, intended for uh, Ellen Brown. It goes over her outstretched arm and her stick, and it goes out of bounds to the Titans. Illinois Wesleyan now with the ball. Going behind the cage, here's Kashina. Torres now, number two. Back to Kashina. Illinois Wesleyan still running its offense, but looking content to just work it around the perimeter and again to run some clock. Again, it is a running clock, too, here in the second half. Kashina out on top to Grimmer. And the ball goes loose down on the ground, and Cisneros had the opportunity, and now it's picked up by Torres of Illinois Wesleyan. And the shot is good there by Mariah Smith as she goes lower level to score. With 21-32 left to play here in the second half. And so for Mariah Smith, that is her second goal of the night. I mentioned earlier, Mariah was recently named the CCIW Defensive Player of the Week. Senior midfielder, congratulations to her from Lincoln Way East, former Griffin. 
So her second goal of the game makes it 17 to 1. 16 unanswered. We were tied at 1 after Ellen Brown scored the goal for Elmhurst at 26 37. Since then, all the scoring to Illinois Wesleyan. Ball goes up into the air, and this draw control goes to goes to the Blue Jays. Knable picked it up, and Knable got hammered and a foul, and it'll be her passing the ball on the restart to Brown. Brown working the far sideline, passes it off to Walker. Walker brings it up, Knable. Grace comes in, and we got a whistle. Violation against the, the Titans. Free position here for Grace Knable. Here's a great opportunity for Grace to get her first goal of the night. Here we go off the restart, working against Godfrey in goal for the Titans. Knable steps up. Couldn't get off the shot. Kelly came up to make the defensive play, and we got a whistle now. And it'll be another free situation here for Grace. Free position. Grace against Godfrey. Steps up, shoots, and scores! Grace Knable, her 45th goal of the season. Second goal of the game for the Blue Jays. Comes with 19-12 to play here in the second half. Unassisted goal by Grace Knable, and that makes the score now 17-2. to two. I mentioned Grace named CCIW Offensive Player of the Week recently. That's the second time she has won that honor. And her and Ellen Brown each with a goal tonight for the Blue Jays as the lights have come on here at Langhorst Field. Just a gorgeous night. Finally, we've had some spring weather Temperatures in the mid-60s. Again, the second game of our doubleheader tonight. The men will be here at Langhorst Field as they will take on the Spartans of Dubuque. 7.30 is the first face-off. Jason Duro will have the call. I will be back here this Sunday as the Blue Jays will have a very, very big game against Illinois Wesleyan. That game will get started at 1 o'clock. And I'm told the temperature is, is going to be down into the 30s. But as long as there's no lightning or thunder, we will be playing lacrosse here Sunday afternoon. So you want to log on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock as the Blue Jays, 9-1 and one on the year, will be taking on Illinois Wesleyan. Illinois Wesleyan undefeated currently in the CCIW at 3-0. and Titans 8-3 overall on the men's side. Free position here for Kashina. And she just will pass it to the back of the cage to Smith. Titans really don't need to score anymore. Again, the running clock down to 17 plus minutes here in this one. Kelly with a pass, shot on goal by Richmond, is off to the left. Illinois Wesleyan regains possession. However, this is Kashina. Up top, Torres dropped it, scooped it right back up. Torres, Kelly on the flash, and she gets shoved back. Tried to pass it to Grimmer, ball is loose, picked up by Kashina. Boy, it just seems like an Illinois Wesleyan player is right there whenever the ball goes to the ground. Shot attempt by Rooney, and she kind of whiffed at it. The ball came loose. Smith behind the cage. Knocked away loose, down on the ground. Walker tried to grab it, and there you go. Illinois Wesleyan comes up with it. That was Grimmer. That came up with the ground ball. And this ground ball is taken by the Blue Jays down on the ground, picked up again, and now we got a whistle. It'll be Blue Jay ball here on the restart. So 
16 minutes remaining in this one. Ball on the ground. We got a whistle. Turnover. It'll be Illinois Wesleyan ball here. Free position for the Titans. Richmond will bring it back after the whistle. Here's Kashina now as Kelly flashes in the middle. Boy, again, here you see the constant movement away from the ball. I'm assuming that's the kind of offense that the men will have on Sunday. Boy, again, that's going to be a huge game. Please log on to BlueJTV.com. And the shot on goal that time by Smith, saved by Keener. The men on Sunday will be taking on Illinois Wesleyan. That's a 1 o'clock face-off here from Langhorst Field. I'll bring you all the action right here on BlueJTV.com. Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. If you're going to come out and see that game in person, folks, bundle up. Ball down on the ground. It'll be Blue Jay ball. Foul against the Titans. Cappuccini clearing it for the Blue Jays. Cappuccini still with the ball, number 16. Works it in the uh, to the back of the cage to Knable. Oh, check that. That's number 17 up there. It's Tessa Celentine. For the Blue Jays, Tessa is a 5'8 freshman out of Lincoln Way East, hometown of New Lenox, South Suburbs. And working is Knabel, and she got pounded. And there's the whistle, and it'll be a restart for Grace. Free position here for Knabel. Already with one goal tonight for the Blue Jays. Her and Ellen Brown each with one goal. Knable here on the restart. Get a good opportunity to score against Godfrey. Splits the defenders. Oh, she goes down on the ground in another whistle, and it'll be another free position for Grace. So she inches about two yards closer now. See if she can notch her second goal of the game and her 46th goal it would be of the season. There's the whistle. Knable comes in, veers to her right, and she scores. And she tossed her stick to the ground for some reason after she scored. So Grace Knable with her second goal of the game, her 46th goal of the season, Comes with just under 13 minutes to go here in the second half, and it's 17 to 3. So the Blue Jays playing pretty good here in the second half. Certainly would like to play well and continue to carry that play as they head on this three game road trip. Unassisted goal by Grace. The final game of the season will be here at home for the women lacrosse team of Elmhurst. They'll be taking on Carthage. That's Wednesday, April 25th. That's a 7 o'clock start under the lights here at Langhorst Field. Again, a running clock here in this second half as we are at the 12-minute mark. And that ground-controlled... By Illinois Wesley. Amanda Best with a ball. Here's Torres at the point, giving it up to Grimmer. Back of the cage is Smith. Well, actually parallel to the cage. Working it behind now to Best. Best under some pressure. Not much movement now offensively for Illinois Wesleyan. I don't think they're in the attack mode here. Well, now as I say that, Torres drives, shoots, no, and it's scooped up by Megan Keener.
Elmhurst trying to clear. They do not, and on the turnover, it's picked up by Mariah Smith. Illinois Wesleyan will now improve to 8-4 and four overall. They'll be 2-0 and oh in the CCIW Conference. Meanwhile, for Elmhurst, the Blue Jays will drop to a game under 500, 5-6, five and, and they would have dropped their first two conference games of the season. They lost at Carroll 20-10 on April 7th, and they'll fall here tonight to Illinois Wesleyan to go 0-2 in conference play. Grimmer trying to track it down before it goes out of bounds. She cannot save it, so it will be Blue Jay ball. At the 10-minute mark here of the second half. Can other teams undefeated in conference play, other than Illinois Wesleyan, Carthage, North Central, and Carroll, those three teams all won their conference openers. Here's Brown. Brown working it here to the near side. Now passes to Knable. Grace with two goals on the night, looking for the hat trick. Spins. And now we got a whistle here. And it'll be a, a violation against Illinois Wesleyan. So a free position once again here for Grace. And she is lined up right in front of the goal. Ten yards out. She steps up, fires! And the save, nice save by Godfrey as Grace was looking for her third goal of the night. It was denied. Nice save by Janae Godfrey, the goalkeeper for Illinois Wesleyan. She started the second half. Claire Quist started the game in goal for Illinois Wesleyan. Oh, ball down on the ground, but it's scooped up by Illinois Wesleyan. Nine different Titans have scored in this game here tonight. And the shot by Sam Bidlack is good. So the goal by Sam Bidlack, that is her first goal of the game. For Bidlack, it is her 12th goal of the season. Comes with just a couple ticks over eight minutes to play, and that goal makes it now 18-3 to three in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. That score, by the way, 18-3, to three, that's the same score that Illinois Wesleyan uh, beat Augustana couple nights ago on April 7th. Give the uh, assist to Mariah Smith. So boy, Illinois Wesleyan making a statement early here in the conference. Beating Augustana on April 7th, 18-3. Here at Elmhurst, they're leading the Blue Jays by that same score of 18-3. Just over seven minutes remaining here in this one. Don't forget, this is the first of two, the second game of our doubleheader, as some of the men starting to enter into Langhorst Field. It'll be the lacrosse men's team of Elmhurst taking on the Spartans of Dubuque. Dubuque coming into tonight's game, 6-6. Six and six. Meanwhile, the Blue Jays, 9-1. and one. The only loss for the men's team coming early on against Aurora University here at Langhorst Field. Blue Jays lost that game 8-7 after leading by two in the fourth quarter. Ellen Brown, free position, steps up, shoots, and it's wide to the left. So again, 7.30 tonight will be the first faceoff. Jason Duro will have the call for you here on BlueJayTV.com. Scooped up there by Godfrey. Just a little bit over six minutes left to play.
Whistle stops the play. It'll be Blue Jay ball here. Spinning and losing the ball down on the ground, and it's scooped up by uh, the Blue Jays. That is Isabel Walker. And this one, can Brown save it? No, she cannot. It will go to Illinois Wesley. Well, wait a minute now. Margaret Carlson looks to be overriding the call here. Walker lost her stick. Now she comes back up to pick it up. And what's the call here? It looks to be like, a, I think, a timeout. Timeout taken here with 5-11 left to play here in this one. Mark Kruger, delighted to bring you all the action. Sorry I couldn't bring you better news if you're a Blue Jays lacrosse fan. The women trailing 18-3 to to the Titans of Illinois Wesleyan here tonight. Mentioned Allison Brady in her fourth season as the head coach of the Blue Jays. Mentioned she uh, was a former head coach at Robert Morris University. First year at Robert Morris, the team went 3-10. and That was in 2012. And then the very next year, 2013, they went 14-4. and Won the Western Conference Championship. It was the first trip ever to the National Women's Lacrosse League Tournament. Placed fourth in that tournament. Brady was named the league's coach of the year. And so she took over during the summer of 2013 here at Elmhurst. And she hopes she can turn this program into a, into a power program like Illinois Wesleyan. Before beginning her college career, Brady, she coached at the high school level was the head varsity girls coach at Naperville North High School from 2007 to 2011. Also has club coaching experience with Lakeshore Lacrosse Club and Players Lacrosse. But her Blue Jays coming up short to a very good Illinois Wesleyan team here tonight. It'll be Ellen Brown here on the on the restart here is Margaret Carlson now looking up here to the to the press box. Not sure exactly what she wants. Now she keeps looking at the scoreboard. 5-11 left to play in the game. Oh, they want to reset. Reset. She wants to reset the shot clock, but it is reset. It's at 90. I think she wants it. She wants it down. I think she wants the shot clock down because right now they have the full 90 seconds on the shot clock. And they want it. Well, now they change it to 72 seconds left. And that's what she wanted. Okay. 72 seconds left on the shot clock. Ellen Brown here will start it. Free position. And after the whistle, she'll back up, set the offense, pass over to the far side to Walker. Walker comes into the middle, has position, shoots and scores, but there was a... All right, they are scoring the goal. It is a goal by Isabel Walker. I wasn't certain because they they blew the whistle, I thought, before Walker shot the ball, but they're saying it's a goal. So Isabel Walker getting the goal, the freshman out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, with her 32nd goal of the season. And that goal makes it 18 to 4 in favor of the Titans. So two goals by Knable, one goal by Brown, and now one goal by Isabel Walker for Brady's Blue Jays. Draw control. Knable trying to pick it up, and it's Brown that gets the ground ball for the Blue Jays. So 
Elmhurst wins the draw control. Brown now loses it, scoops it right back up. She's double teamed, trying to get out of that double team, loses it, ball on the ground. She's trying to pick it up, say, trying to save it before it goes out of bounds. And now what's the call? Two officials are talking things over, and what's the call? Blue Jay ball. Boy, look at the de defense by the Titans. They're triple teaming Brown for some reason. And Brown passes it off to Cisneros, who drops it, picked it up, passes it to Walker. Walker and a foul called here against Illinois Wesleyan. And it's going to be Blue Jay ball here on the restart. A little over three minutes remaining in the game. Well, Illinois Wesleyan led 14-1 to at halftime. And so they've only outscored the Blue Jays 4-3 to here in the second half. Now I know perhaps the Titans, they have some other type of personnel. They've got another goalie here in the second half. But nevertheless, the Blue Jays played a little bit better in the second half, I would say, than in the first half. Now we've got a restart here. This is going to be Danny Engelbright for Illinois Wesleyan. Two and a half left. And now one of the officials is coming over here and I think another shot clock situation. Currently the shot clock is at the full 90. And I think they want the shot clock set Oh, they're, okay, they, they're changing the, the game clock now at 2.45. All right, back to action. Walker picking up the ground ball. Walker at the top. Makes the spin move. Couldn't get the shot off, and it's picked off. And the turnover. Engelbright ahead to Kashina. Kashina to Grimmer. And they're going to work it behind the cage to Kashina. Now Kashina comes up top on the point. Passes it to Bidlack, and Bidlack scores. Bidlack flashed in the middle, got it turned, and, and really without looking, goes lower left. And so Sam Bidlack gets the goal. For Bidlack, that is her second goal of the night. And that makes it 19-4 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. This will be the biggest margin of defeat for the Blue Jays this season. Losing Right now they're trailing by 15. They lost by 13, second game of the season at Olivet, 15 to 2. See if the Blue Jays can get another goal here with just over a minute to play. Right now, Illinois Wesleyan in possession, and the 90 second shot clock has been shut off because there's just one minute left to play in the game. So, Illinois Wesleyan can just run the clock out. Titans working it behind the cage as they're just going to be just settling for passing the ball around the perimeter. Freshman Rooney sprinting in number 15. Richmond passes it behind. Rooney loses it down on the ground and she scoops it up. Up top to Kashina. 18 seconds remaining here in this game. Again, Illinois Wesleyan will improve to 8-4 overall, 2-0 oh in the CCIW. Meanwhile, the Blue Jays will drop a game under 500, 5-6 five and six on the year, and 0-2 oh and in the CCIW. Final seconds ticking away, and that will do it. Final score from Langhorse Field, 19-4 in favor of Illinois Wesleyan. Don't forget the men coming up. 
It'll be the Blue Jays of Elmhurst taking on the Spartans of Dubuque. 730 is the opening faceoff. Jason Durrell will have the call for you here on BlueJayTV.com. So for everybody here at Elmhurst College, Mark Kruger saying so long, reminding you once again to log in at 730 here on BlueJayTV.com tonight for the men as they will take on the Spartans of Dubuque. Mark Kruger saying so long from Langhorse Field. Illinois Wesleyan knocks off the Blue Jays tonight by a score of 19-4. We'll talk to you Sunday afternoon. So long, everybody.